Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back once again. Uh, today, we're going to go over how to set your stream up for single PC streaming uh, to get the best quality, lowest impact, and uh, all around uh, most, uh, I guess, uh, minimal headaches trying to stream on a single PC. It's gotten a lot better over the last um, probably six to eight months. I've been single PC streaming for about uh, almost two years now. Um, and, um, it's a lot less babysitting than it used to be. So, uh, why don't we hop in? I'll show you guys what's going on, give you guys some tips and tricks, and hopefully you guys find this helpful to, uh, to get streaming and, uh, and start making content. So, uh, let's hop on in. Let's check it out. All right, guys. So there's a few different things we're going to cover today. Uh, main thing is going to be the encoder. Uh, setting that up and getting the stream to kind of run flawlessly without you have to worrying about anything This is mainly going to kick in uh, for today's setup guys. The one thing that you're gonna need is a uh, Nvidia video card doesn't have to be the latest and greatest by any means um, But there are two different uh, essentially uh, Encoders if you will the NVAC encoder it is uh, it's in it's Nvidia's encoder um, and to kind of clear up a few different things um, you've got uh, dedicated chips on the GPU, okay, that will encode your stream. It doesn't use the GPU itself, so it's not going to uh, impact your actual gameplay. Sans um, two to four, two to five percent of your your GPU's uh, usage, uh, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Where it does impact your GPU. Uh, your video card in general is the amount of memory that you use or the amount of memory that it uses. And there will be some games. Um, the one I have the most problems with um, is the new Modern Warfare. That thing eats memory for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and like everything. And so with that game, I have had encoder crashes in the past. Um, so depending on what you're playing, so far, that's the only thing I've had a problem with. Apex, um, Tarkov, uh, Astroneer, um, World of Warcraft, Kerbal, uh, a bunch of other games. No problems whatsoever. Modern Warfare, I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing something with, uh, with your memory. So that's really the only thing you really have to watch out for when it comes to single PC uh, streaming in that, in that regard. Uh, so... First thing you're going to do is, you, you know, you have OBS installed, right? I'm using uh, OBS 24.0.3 uh, for this. You do need the latest um, uh, version because what you're going to do is you're going to right click when you run the program and you're going to run it as an administrator. And what that's going to do is that's going to do the first step to make uh, your life much easier because it's going to allow OBS to reserve a certain amount of GPU that it needs to make sure that your stream always stays at 60 FPS or at 30 FPS, whatever you have it set to, right? So first things first, run OBS in administrator mode uh, to make sure your stream stays like butter, okay? So up next is setting up your encoder. So we're gonna go to settings. I'm gonna try to uh, keep this over here. <clears throat> Since I'm having uh, OBS as the background, I went ahead and put my camera over my preview. So this way we didn't get like, you know, the inception forever kind of thing um so yeah so i'm gonna try to do my best to keep everything out from behind the camera okay so first things first you want to go to output and you're gonna have a few different tabs right uh when you set this up the first time uh it's probably going to be set on x264 if you go to this drop down i can't do it right now because i'm recording um you're gonna have uh i believe three options you're gonna have uh uh x264 uh, NVIDIA uh, NVENC, and then NVIDIA NVENC new. And now you want the new version of the encoder, even if you have an older NVIDIA card, because the new version of the encoder is more uh, efficient, okay? So make sure that you uh, set it to that. Uh, for your uh, rate control, I always leave this on CBR. Your bit rate will depend on your internet, okay? Um, so you can head over to, you know, speed test or whatever. Check your upload, not your download, check your upload. Uh, and then set yourself um, like 60 to 70% of your max upload is about as far as you want to go to make sure you maintain stability on that. So, um, and then the other side of this, and this goes into bitrate as well as resolution, 
is uh, if you're a partner, you don't need to worry about it because your viewers will have the ability to change uh, their quality level. If you're an affiliate um, uh, or not affiliated, you have to do you do have to be careful about your resolution because you won't have encode or uh, resolution options. And so if you're running like 1080p, 60 FPS at a bajillion bit rate and someone comes into your stream without very good internet, they can't do anything and they're just going to buffer. They won't be able to watch you. So keep that in mind, right? Uh, your keyframe uh, interval, I find that two works the best. Your preset, I always leave this to max quality. I've never had an issue. If you have an issue with stuttering, you can bring it down to quality, but I always leave it at max quality. Uh, profile, high. Um, look ahead. So look ahead is going to do a few um, different things. Uh, a lot of it will depend, I think, on um, the style of game you play. I typically leave it off uh, for fast paced uh, games. And then um, visual uh, tuning uh, from this uh, also does uh, impact more um, as it tries to optimize it uh, for faster paced things. It will increase uh, GPU utilization a little bit, but uh, it can result in a much better uh, picture uh, or image quality uh, in the long run. From what I've seen personally, having this on or off hasn't changed my performance whatsoever. So I think it's just in there for like legal crap uh gpu uh this doesn't matter so much if you have multiple gpus you can select either or how the nvidia and vec encoder works however is you want it to encode off the same main gpu that's encoding your rig uh, because if not then it has to send it through the pci bus to get to the other uh gpu um and that's not good because it's it adds latency so um i typically leave this to zero and then my max b frames i leave that to uh i set that to two um, so that's kind of what I do on the encoder side. And this gives me a stream that is uh, 1080p, 60 FPS. Uh, and when I've done a lot of tests, it rivals um, a machine that's on um, uh, X264 medium preset, uh, which is cool. Um, I do run slightly higher bit rate. I'm not going to say what I run. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, and then, so that is for the output. For video, uh, this part here is important, guys. So depending on your CPU and depending on what you've got going on, if you run a game, say, at 1440p and you want to stream at 1080p, uh, you have your base canvas and your output. You want to make sure that your base canvas and your output match because if they don't match, your CPU is going to take an additional hit because it has to actually scale stuff and change it. So Anytime that you guys can run your base canvas the same as your output. So even if you run at 1440p, that's fine. Play your game at 1440, but make sure when you set up all your scenes in OBS, you set it up while it's set to 1080, because if you don't, it's going to skew everything. So um, that is uh, my two cents on the, um, uh, the video uh, output. Uh, obviously, this stuff here is just your Twitch login. No big deal. Now, uh, one of the other things that I do when people uh, say, like, you know, I'm sure you're watching this video, you're like, Cardo, what the f Why are you using light mode? Oh my goodness, this is terrible. I use dark mode in everything. I mean, you can even see it here in my stream information. It's on dark mode. But I don't like key lights. They're terrible, in my, my opinion. I don't like, like a beaming bright sun next to my camera. So I actually use the, uh, the, the, the ambient light from uh, my OBS background and drops um i got this tip from uh, activator check him out it's cool dude um uh, twitch.tv slash activator uh but uh so uh if you change your theme in here to dark you're like this is what happens i just lost all my light and now my scene is actually pretty dark so i do leave this on system so now you guys can actually see me uh, and it's not overly, overly bright. It's a little bit brighter now because I've got a preview up over here to make sure I don't put anything behind the camera. And I've got it over here, so I'm getting like, like hit like twice. So uh, typically it's not too bad, but there's that. So that's going to be um, in the general setting. So we went over the encoder setup. We went over the video setup. Um, another good thing, I'm going to cancel on this just because I changed something. The other big thing that you guys should look into for sure is on your uh, your audio device, your microphone filters. I run a few different things. Um, uh, for these, uh, I got these uh, settings and ideas uh, from Ernst. He's an amazing audio dude. 
amazing audio you got. You know what? I'm going to put a link to uh, Ernst uh, and uh, Activator uh, down in the description. You guys should go check out their, their channels. They have really good content. So there you go. Cross promotion. Holy crap. Who would have thought? Um, so... Uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, I run a noise gate, I run a compressor, and I run an EQ um, just to uh, get my voice where I where I essentially want it. So the noise gate, for those who don't know, if I turn this off, uh, and now there's like background there. Let me turn the fan on. I don't even know if you guys here. So now you guys can hear there's like background noise and stuff, and and it's not nearly as uh, podcasty and as clear. Um, so that's what the noise gate essentially does. I'm going to turn this off now because it's hella loud. A uh, compressor will essentially compress. I know it sounds crazy. Kind of brings the highs of the highs and lows of the lows and brings them together. And what that does is it allows you to get really excited on stream and be like, yo, what's up? Or you can do like whisper and some like ASMR crap. And, and everybody can still hear you regardless because the compressor is doing its thing to make sure that you're always... Uh, audible and then the eq what i use that for um i say pretty harsh um s's and uh t's uh and so i actually use the eq to bring the high uh, out of my voice a little bit so it softens up um those it makes it a little bit easier on your ear so uh those would be audio filters and kind of setting up your audio um again uh ernst is an audio god so i'll probably link uh one of his videos in the description the one that i used to set my stuff up because there's no reason for me to redo it because his video is uh is amazing so there is there is that i'm trying to think if there's anything else um on this for the setup that i wanted to go over for being a single pc streamer um i guess for yeah for checking out what you're doing remember earlier when i talked about memory utilization so i use a program for that called uh, MSI Afterburner. If you guys are in overclocking at all, you'll know what it is. I've got a couple other videos on this. I'll throw those in the down below as well. But uh, for this, guys, essentially what you're doing is in the monitor monitoring section, you have the ability to see memory usage of your uh, GPU. Okay. And so in here, in here sound memory usage. So right now I'm using two gigs of my VRAM, uh, VRAM or video RAM, the memory on the video card. Uh, and that is to run the NVIDIA encoder for the stream as well as, I think I, I use about a gig passively just because I've got uh, three screens uh, running at uh, 1440. I think they're all 1440 right now. This one may be 1080, but either way, it doesn't matter. Um, and so that's why I've got the usage. Now, when I go to play a game... Um, what do I have here that I can actually open up really quick? Uh, here. I was just doing some Tarkov stuff. So I'll open up Tarkov again. Hopefully. Uh, doesn't go too, too crazy. We may lose um, this background, but that's fine. I'll have charts and bars and stuff as soon as this thing loads. So when you go to load a game, however, what's going to happen is that memory usage is going to increase. There we go. Uh, and so now you can kind of see here, uh, right here, middle of the screen. Sorry, the, the frame rate in the game is, is pretty rough, so it makes everything look pretty rough. Um, but uh, as you can see that we're climbing, and now we're at like three gigs of uh, memory used, and then it'll go higher, four, five, six, whatever it gets to. I forget exactly where Tarkov lands at. And different games are going to use different amounts of, uh, of memory. So you can use uh, MSI Afterburner, uh, as well as uh, Riva Tuner Statistics Server to kind of monitor that and keep an eye on it. This overlay, I usually, I, I obviously don't keep these graphs up. Typically, uh, what I run with when I um, when I stream uh, is without the bar graphs, and then I actually shrink all that down. And so, in the top left corner, I have my GPU, CPU, uh, temperature of my uh, coolant, and the uh, water cooler. Uh, hard drive temps or SSD temps and then frame rate. Uh, and so typically what I'll look at is this number right here, which is the amount of video RAM I'm using. Cause I know if I go up to like seven gigs of VRAM used, my stream is going to crash. It is the one big gotcha uh, that still happens for single PC streamers. But again, right now, Modern Warfare is the only game I've ever had it happen in. No other game has given me an issue, just Modern Warfare. 
So take that with a grain of salt. All right, I think I think that about covers it, guys. We went over uh, encoder setup. We went over um, the video output. We went over uh, light mode, quick audio stuff that I'll link in the bottom, and then uh, things to keep an eye out for for your encoder. And that should just about cover it. So again, one of the beauties of the NVIDIA encoder is it lets you do a single PC stream without having to worry about um, you know, heavy CPU usage and, and robbing your stuff. And it's really, really helpful in games like uh, CSGO that are super CPU dependent and your GPU is usually sitting there like taking a nap anyway, but you're still at, like 500 frames. And that's really where this stuff kind of can come in as well as other games. Um, I've played Borderlands, Astroneer, Tarkov, WoW, Modern Warfare, sans stupid memory issues, um, uh, Sekiro, a lot of different games, uh, single PC stream, and it runs great. Constantly it compliments on stream quality. And if you go through the steps and you do your homework and you make sure everything's set up, um, it's it's really not that hard to uh, to get it set up and make it so it's PogChamp with just what you have sitting next to you. It's all about knowing uh, your setup and, and really how you kind of want to position your thing. So, um, so yeah, so that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If so please like subscribe, all that crap. Catch me live twitch.tv Cardo, as you can see down below over here somewhere. And, uh, and thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll ask you guys stay humble, be excellent to each other. And, uh, we will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.